Hello class, good evening everyone, so my students, good evening. My name is Professor Ezri M. Gondon Jr., your instructor for this subject, Experimental Psychology. And welcome to this class for the second semester of the school year. So this will be our first chapter, the first discussion for this subject. So the first chapter will discuss experimental psychology and the scientific method. So kasali sa pag, uh, pag-aaralan natin sa chapter na ito is the need for scientific methodology, the characteristics of modern science, the objectives of psychological science, the tools of psychological science, scientific explanation in psychological science, and the organization of the text. So I hope that you will be learning something from this you know, because in experimental psychology, we will be discussing a lot about the experimental designs and non-experimental designs, how to select our respondents, how to manipulate our conditions, our respondents, our, how to provide treatments or how to, um, to give treatments to our respondents and what are the alternatives if we are not going to conduct um, experiments so that will be the discussion for this entire subject but allow me to give you an overview of what experimental psychology is as a scientific method now science, con science connotes the question in here is that how are science methodology and data interrelated so these are the very questions that might come into our minds pag sinasabi natin relationship no, ng science, methodology, at saka data. Because throughout this subject, this subject, we will be discussing about science, about research methodologies, about data. So, dapat alam natin kung ano yung relationship ng tatlong concepts na ito. So, science connotes content and process. Now, methodology naman, it consists of the scientific techniques we use to collect and evaluate data. At saka yung data naman are the facts we gather using scientific methods. So, in short, there will be no data if we don't have methodology on how to gather those data. And of course, our data and methodology will be useless unless we don't have the principles of science to validate our claim and to ground our claims in various theories and in various principles and laws in science. So since we are talking with psychology concepts, so there will be a lot of theories, a lot of principles in psychologies that will be discussed in here. And that is how these concepts are interrelated yung science methodology and data so since psychology is scientific kailangan talaga natin sumunod sa scientific method now what is common sense psychology at so common sense psychology naman sabi ni Fritz Heider non-scientific data gathering daw ang common sense psychology now, this approach uses non-scientific sources of data and non-scientific inference. An everyday example is believing that opposites attract. So, ibig sabihin ba kapag common sense psychology or common sense uh, psychological approach in gathering data ay hindi na siya totoo or hindi na siya reliable, hindi na siya valid? Tinatawag sa non-scientific because in a common a common sense psychology does not necessarily conduct experiment in gathering the data that is why it is non scientific in that aspect but hindi ibig sabihin na hindi reliable at saka valid yung mga data na nagagather using common sense psychology okay so yung main example niya diyan is yung everyday example na opposite at opposites attracts Daw, no? So, yan yung example na. Ano bang sinab ibig sabihin ng attract? So, kasi, kasi ginawa niya yung example na everyday example 
Okay, let us try to see anong ibig sabihin ng opposites. Opposites attract. Anyway, kapag sinasabi natin opposites attract, ibig sabihin yan na, for example, the more you hate, the more you love. No? So, the more na, the more na may hate ka sa isang tao, the more thou, the more daw na mas love mo siya. Kasi, naa ka sa kanya, kaya nahi-hate mo siya. So, yun yung opposites. No? Ano pa bang another example ng opposite tracks? So, it is an, sometimes, it is an idiom na sinasabing people who are very different from each other are often attracted to each other. No? Sinasabi din nila no? sa mga couples na kung sino daw yung compatible, sila daw yung Uh, very opposite. Yung isa dapat ma madaldal. Yung isa dapat naman mahinhin, no? Or hindi naman masadong into, uh, extroverted. So, yung mga extrovert saka introvert, sila daw yung mas nag attract or nag click no? So, yun yung sinasabi ng, uh, sinasabi ng opposite attract. So, in a recent study naman published in the journal Developmental Psychology, which look at data from 1,965 couples, to find patterns related to long-term relationships, relationship success, and the finding supports that opposites do attract to an extent. So, yun yung naging findings nila. Imagine, no? 1,965 couples yan klasa. And the study really proved that opposites do attract. So, yan, yan yung ibig sabihin daw, no? Nang uh, uh, psychology. Uh, common sense. So, let us try to dig deeper with that. Now, common sense psychology is the kind of everyday non-scientific gathering that shapes our expectations and beliefs and directs our behavior towards others. So, for example, no, a common sense psychology is the person's ability to gather data in a systematic and impartial way is constrained by two factors. So, may limitation din yun nung pag gather natin ng common sense Uh, uh, data natin no, for common sense psychology. Kasi pag sinasabi natin common sense psychology, ito yung mga researchers na nagkakandak ng mga non-scientific na non-scientific na designs or ibig sabihin yung mga non-experimental designs. Okay? So, pag gumagawa tayo ng mga research na ganito, especially sa mga concepts ng psychology, hindi naman kailangan na gumamit ng experimental design. Hindi naman kailangan na mag-experiment at mag-manipulate ng mga variables or mag-manipulate ng ating mga uh, respondents or participants. Minsan, no, we get our data from interviewing people or from surveying people. So, that is how common sense psychology works. But there are two ways no, or two factors that uh, makes our systematic and impartial way constrained no, in data gathering. First is sources of psychological information sa our inferential strategies. Pag sinasabi natin sources of psychological information, constrained tayo dyan kasi yung psych psychological information natin is nakadepende lang naman sa mga taong qualified no, to give Uh, specific answers to our research questions kapag nagkakandak tayo ng mga research, no? Especially uh, sa ating mga non-experimental research designs. For example, may case study tayo, may phenomenological studies, correlational studies. So, yung sources natin psychological information is limited lang to them, no? So, hindi naman, hindi naman pwede, no? Na, hindi na, na isali natin lahat kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng mga survey or case tsaka phenomenological study because isa sa limitation dyan is yung pagpili ng ating mga respondents or subjects. Pangalawa naman are inferential strategies. So, depending sa ating mga researcher, ano, iba-iba ang ating mga inferential strategies. So, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng mga inferential strategies? So, inferential strategies, ang ibig sabihin niyan class is that Uh, it connects a reader's prior knowledge and experiences with their comprehension of a text. No? So, ibig sabihin dyan, as a researcher, yung pag-a-analyze natin sa mga data na nag-gathered natin or data na nag-gathered natin is dependent yan sa kung ano yung, pag, yun, ano yung perception, kung paano natin 
iniintindi yung data na nag-gather natin at saka sa experiences na meron tayo. So, ganyan yung inferential strategies natin. So, limitado daw dyan ang ating pag-gather ng data sa common sense, as a common sense psychologist. Now, sources of psychological information naman, the data we gather as a common sense psychologist come from sources that seem credible and trustworthy friends, relatives, people with authority. Ayan, no? So, hindi pwedeng hindi natin kilala yung ating mga respondents or subjects. Unless, no, we have, uh, we have a specific qualification for that. Kahit hindi natin kilala, basta credible sila. Dapat trustworthy din. Hindi, ayan nga, no? Hindi, yun nga, hindi ibig sabihin class na uh, non-scientific, hindi totoo, hindi credible, hindi trustworthy yung kukunin natin. So, kukunin natin sila dahil sila ang nararapat or dapat na maging respondents natin or subjects natin based sa qualification ng ating uh, mga respondents na we have set for our research. Now, non-scientific inference is the non-scientific use of information to explain or predict behavior. So, may, explain, may samples tayo dyan, no? We have the gambler's fallacy, overuse of trait explanations, stereotyping, and overconfidence bias illustrate this problem. So, ano ba itong mga gambler's fallacy? Or ano ba itong mga non Uh, inference, non-scientific inferences natin. So, number one, we have the gambler's fallacy or people misuse data to estimate the probability of an event like when a slot machine will pay off. So, for example, itong gambler's fallacy, no? Um, this is a, this is a, this is a, an example of this is that kapag palaging umuulan or managaroon ng ulan, the entire week no so there will be uh, an estimate or probability na uulan din next week so ganyan yung gambler's fallacy kasi in literal sense itong gambler's fallacy ano ba yung character ng isang gambler di ba so kapag nanalo sa ngayon kapag nanalo sa ngayon sa isang slot machine Kapag nanalo siya ngayon sa isang slot machine, so sunod-sunod na yung panalo. Or kung matalo man siya, kahit sunod-sunod na talo, kahit manalo lang siya ng isang beses, mababawin niya na yung mga talo niya. So yan yung gambler's fallacy. No? So people misuse data to estimate the pro... Dahil na may, may basis sila, hindi big sabihin na may basis sila, may estimate na nila yung probability ng isang event. Yan yung mga non-scientific na inferential, uh, non-scientific na mga inferences natin o paggawa ng mga inferences natin. Pangalawa, we also have overused trait of explanations or to explain others' behavior, we often make unwanted disposition or attributions and underused situation information. No? So this bias can reduce the accuracy of our explanations and predictions. Ano ba ang example ng overused trait explanation natin? No? Explanation natin. So hindi ibig sabihin, for example, nagkat ang example ko dito last time class is that my friend ka no na palaging yung trait niya is that but palagi niyang kasama yung mga boys no sa school ninyo kasi nakakapag jam siya or parang boy sa ganyan no so kasama niya palagi yung mga school Uh, boy sa school ninyo. And then one time, no, unfortunately, na-rape po siya or, nag, or namulesta siya, then yung explanation mo dyan ngayon sa situation na yan, sa situation na yan, isinabi mo sa situation, yung rationalization mo is that ay parang hindi naman, hindi naman ako magtataka, no, na na namulesta siya kasi palagi niya kasama yung mga boys no it's possible na parang ano ba talipanda siya ano bang tamang term no na gusto na yung nangyari sa kanya no kasi nga palagi natin siya nakikita na kasama yung mga boys so this bias can reduce the accuracy of our explanations and predictions so yun yung overuse ng trait explanations or natin no saka so, we have stereotyping then we falsely assume the specific behaviors cluster together for example yung nangyari nung 
isang black American na may prior naman siya. May prior na nga siya na case, no? criminal case, but he already served his sentence. Parang napatunayan naman siya or may sentence ba siya or napatunayan na hindi niya ginawa yung crime. But since black American siya, na nangyaring krimen malapit sa suburb niya or sa bahay niya, so yeah, yung, sa yung naging naging uh, sa yung naging number one na sospek nila kahit wala naman silang evidence. So ayun, yung ginawa nila Floyd, parang si Floyd yun, no? Namatay siya dahil tinapakan siya sa tuhod o diniinan ang kanyang liig ng tuhod ng isang police enforcer hanggang namatay siya. Ang nangyari, sinunog ng mga tao. Yung police station doon. I don't know if you're if you're familiar with that situation, but yun yung nangyari sa kan sa police station kasi it was stereotyping kasi it was a, it was a it was an old issue in America. Not stereotyping is discrimination connected to prejudice and discrimination. Na inaasum dahil kasama siya sa grupo na yan, yung quality sa traits na ay kasama sa grupo na yan, same na din yung behaviors niya. So, yan yung sinasabi nating stereotyping. Now, overconfidence bias naman, we feel more confident about our conclusions that than is warranted by available data. So, minsan, we are very confident no, of our perception, our opinion, na kahit walang available data, ay nagwawaran tayo na ito ay totoo. No? Pinapangalanda ka natin na yung ating sinasabi ay totoo without available, available data. So this form of non-scientific inference can result in erroneous conclusions when we don't recognize the limitations of supporting data. Now, ano yung characteristics of modern science? So, Alfred North Whitehead's scientific mentality assumes that behavior follows a natural order and can be predicted. So this assumption is essential to science. There is no point to using the scientific method to gather and analyze data if there is no implicit order. The principle of determinism is applied when we believe that the causes of human behavior can be researched. So kaya main tayong scientific method, no? Because yung scientific mentality according to Whitehead is that meron talagang natural order yung mga bagay, mga behavior. And that is why meron tayong research method or scientific method because these behaviors or this phenomena can be researched. Because there is no use in scientific method class in using scientific method kung walang natural order yung mga bagay-bagay. No, I hope that is clear to us. Now, yung gathering empirical data naman, sinasabi dito na empirical data, magkakaroon lang tayo ng data, empirical data when we really observe and experience those data or those those things no, that we have written or we have extracted from our research. Kaya nga, yung empirical approach ni Galileo was more superior to Aristotle's common sense method kasi nga may evidence si Galileo Galilei. Now Galileo correctly concluded that light objects fall as rapidly as heavy ones in a vacuum. So if you would like to know no what happened to that uh to that research or to that um hypothesis daw na kapag walang hangin, kapag walang gravity or nasa loob ng vacuum yung isang feather daw at saka yung isang mabigat na bagay, iron, will fall the same, will fall with the same uh, speed, sabi ni Galileo. Now, we also have seeking general principles. A law consists of statements generally expressed as equations with few variables that have overwhelming empirical support. Laws like the laws of thermodynamics are useful in the physical sciences. Now, kapag sinasabi na itong law, these are proven theories na. Now, these are uh, proven uh, laws. Kaya sa naging law kasi uh, these are theories. Or this is a hypothesis that has been uh, uh, proven with overwhelming empirical support which studies na. Kahit anong ulit-ulit replicate sa mga studies, napatunayan na siyang totoo. Kaya naging law na siya. No? While yung theory naman is an interim explanation, ibig sabihin, pag sinasabi natin interim, it's an um, preliminary explanation 
or a set of related statements used, used to explain and predict phenomena. So, yung kaibahan ng law at theory, yung theory ay pwede natin ma-prove or ma-disprove. No? While yung law is natural na talaga, hindi na talaga siya nababago. Now, theories integrate diverse data, explain behavior, and predict new instances of behavior. Yan yung sinasabi natin na theory. So, commonly, no, sa psychology ng mga research, theories yung palagi natin ginagamit kasi hindi naman tayo palagi na gumagawa ng mga experimentations. Kapag yung mga experimentations, kanya nagre-require ng mga law of sciences. Yan, especially kapag mga uh, internal sa uh, mga scientific na experiments. Kapag uh, mga non-scientific lang, so kailangan dyan, mga theory lang para ma-prove or ma-disprove yung claim natin or ma-generalize yung claim ng isang theory. Now, good thinking naman, um, it's a critical no critical aspect to the scientific method. We engage in good thinking when data collection and interpretation are systematic, objective, and rational. So, Occam's Razor, ano ba ipig sabihin ng Occam's Razor? This emphasizes to the basic premise that entities should not be multiplied without necessity. Or ito yung parsimonious, uh, parsimony, no? principle of parsimony. Na we prefer the simplest useful explanation. For example... Kendall 1988 show that the social contagion model of bulimia was more parsimonious than competing explanations. So, ito daw yung bulimia is mas nakukuha daw sa it's more of a social contagion. No? Kasi kapag may, nala, may nakilala kang isang bulimic person, you tend to mimic or you tend to what? You tend to attribute no? a bulimic per, bulimic person's uh, attributes to yourself, that is why nagkakaroon din ka din ng bulimic tendencies. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng social contagion model ni Crandall in 1988. Meron din tayong self-correction. No? Modern scientists accept the uncertainty of their own conclusions. Changes in scientific explanations and theories are extremely important part of scientific progress. Ayun nga. If you have you have you have your own conclusions in your experiment and then someone disproved you that conclusion after some replications you have to correct yourself you have to accept that and also publishing results now there is no a useless yung results natin sa mga research natin kapag hindi natin sinishare sa iba okay so that must be the main goal of psychological research sa so replication Napaka-importante na nare-replicate yung ating uh, mga protocols, ating research, yung mga treatments, saka conditions. Because that is one way of checking the, the validity of our research. Saka description. Number one, four major objectives of research no, conducted in psychology. So ano ba yung mga... Ano po ba yung uh, mga major objectives natin? Why do we conduct research in psychology? Number one, we have description. So, we always describe behavior. Number two, um, prediction. By using those description, by using use, those uh, words that we have described, we may be able to predict future behaviors no? out of those uh, description. Well, now, we have explanation. If you already have a description no, of what we have researched in a psychological study, we may be able to predict and we may be able to explain as well kung ano po yung mga nangyayari, yung conditions niya, yung behavior niya, no? So, yan yung purpose ng ating psychological research. And lastly, to control. Refers to the application of what has been learned about behavior. Pag may na-predict na tayo, paano ba natin malalaman kung makokontrol or kung paano ba natin i-control itong mga symptoms or mga mga manifestations ng behavior natin. So those are the four objectives no, ng psychological research. May dalawang types of research tayo tinatawag no, sa psychological research. We have applied at saka basic research. Pag sinasabi nating applied research, these are research that were really designed to solve real-world problems. So, ibig sabihin, may problema ka, real-world problem, and then you conduct a research out of it. Then, you give your recommendations, your program, your intervention programs, and then it will be applied to that real-world problem. 
While yung basic research naman is a research designed to test theories or to explain psychological phenomena in humans and animals. So purely po, ito ay ginagamit lamang yung basic research kapag gusto nating ma-prove or ma-disprove yung isang theory or ma-replicate ba yung isang theory or yung isang study or gusto natin mag-explain ang isang psychological phenomena, phenomena which is already existing in the natural world. Now, number one, there are three main tools po no, of scientific method. So, number one, observation, of course. Kailangan nating mag-observe para maka-record po tayo ng mga behavior, ng mga events, at kung anong mga, mga attributes or psychological traits and characteristics yung gusto nating i-record para sa ating research. Pangalawa, measurement. We really need to quantify kung ano po yung mga gusto nating i-research. Kasi may yung type, main type of research din, no? yung quantitative at qualitative research. Kapag gusto natin quantify at gusto natin malaman yung ating result through numbers at tables or graphs, yun po yung tinatawag na quantitative na research method which deals with numbers, survey, interviews, ganyan. No? Um, surveys, questionnaires. While yung ating mga interviews naman, FGD or focus group discussions and yung mga tinatawag nating in-depth interviews, mga words po yung ating mga results dyan. We will, we will come up with themes at saka uh, yun yung result ng ating study. So we try to measure a standardized unit so that our measurements will be meaningful. We keep our measurements consistent. So, yan po yung character ng ating measurement. No? While experimentation naman is a process undertaken to demonstrate that already observed events will occur consistently under a particular set of conditions. So, to conduct an experiment, the hypothesis must be testable, procedures must be available to test it, and it must be ethical to do so. So, we have antecedent condition. May dinatawag po tayo na antecedent condition. Tsaka treatment condition. Pag sinasabi nating antecedent condition naman, these are the circumstances that come before the event or behavior that we want to explain. So, ito po yung mga precursors ng ating, uh, ng ating mga conditions, no? ating uh, mga subjects or respondents. So, while treatment condition, a specific set of antecedent conditions created by the experimenter and presented to subjects to test its effect on behavior. So, uh, yung treatment condition natin, yun, ito po yung mga set of antecedent conditions. Ibig sabihin, ito po yung sources ng mga changes para sa ating, uh, sa ating dependent variable. Ito po yung mga a treatment natin, no? mga conditions natin. So, I hope that is clear po. And then, we have psychology experiment. It is a controlled procedure in which at least two different treatment conditions are applied to subjects. Now, the subject's behaviors are, the, are then measured and compared to test hypothesis about the effects of those treatments on behavior. So, ito yung gagawin natin, no? psychology experiment. So, we will be having a controlled at saka experimental group and we will apply to different treatment conditions depende sa mga conditions na iiset na iseset ninyo for your respondent I mean subjects and then you will record the changes in their behavior or in or the variable that you want to record para malaman natin kung may changes ba talaga galing sa manipulation natin no? so an experiment requires that we create at least two treatment conditions so at least two para magkaroon tayo ng comparison and randomly assigned subjects to these conditions. So in psychology experiments, we control extraneous variables so that we can measure what we intend to measure. Sometimes kasi, kapag in, yung sinatawag natin ng mga extraneous variables, these are the variables that affects the behavior, affects the, uh, not just behavior, but the things that we would like to measure no, in our dependent variables na hindi naman natin siniset. For example, you want to know the you want to know the i don't know if this is up if this is viable ha you want to know the uh hyperactivity level of a rat if you will apply your condition or if you will allow the rat to eat uh, various levels or various amount of uh what you call this chocolate so now your treatment there is your various amount of chocolate or diverse no? 
Now, if ngayon nakakain ang rat ng ibang pagkain aside from that, so naging extraneous variables yun kasi hindi mo naman intended to measure yung ibang pagkain. So, kulit lang. So, extraneous variables sa nakaka-apekto siya sa mini-measure natin. So, hindi na reliable yung ating measurement or ating result niyan kasi may nakain na siyang iba. Okay? So, that yung ibig sabihin ng extraneous variables. Now, on experiment, attempts to establish a cause and effect relationship. So, yan yung nangyayari sa experiment natin. Yung dapat, yung cause ng effect is from IV to DV. No? Yung cause ng uh, if change sa behavior ng DV is from your IV, which is your condition. Ito yung tawag nating antecedent or yung mga treatment conditions natin. So, that is the difference between experiment and non-experiment. Kahit may IV at DV tayo sa mga non-experimental designs, katulad ng correlation na research, hindi naman nakaka-establish ng cause and effect relationship yung correlation na research. No? Relationship lang yung ina establish niyan. So, experiments establish a temporal relationship because causes must proceed, proceed effects. However, not all prior events are causes. So, hindi po talaga lahat. No? So, depende po yan sa ating mga experiments. Now, when we say pseudoscience naman, is any field of science that gives the appearance of being scientific but is no true scientific basis and has not been confirmed using the scientific method. Modern pseudosciences include past life regression, reparenting, and rebirthing. So, yun yung example na ating pseudoscience. So, field of study and class na uh, which claims, no? to be scientific but actually it's not no it gives the appearance of being scientific but it's actually not so regression ng ating past life ayan reparenting at saka rebirthing yan yung example natin no ng isang pseudo science na research or study now next is okay no i think that ends our slides now this is the last part of our slide for this chapter chapter one introduction of um, um experimental psychology and the scientific method i hope you have learned something from this if you have questions don't hesitate no to comment in this video and also your reflection for this chapter and then um, answer our activity in keeper if there are set activities for this. Thank you so much and see you in the next video recording.